Warning, 77P egg, egg wife, is a drug-induced fever dream riddled with crude toilet humor, foul language, drug use, and sex jokes. It would be impossible to adequately review this game without including these topics in the video. Viewer discretion is advised. Enjoy! If I'm forever scarred by this experience, I have Hyper Strange to blame. They reached out to me and were like, hey, do you want to review this game? And I was like, sure, why not? After all, I'd seen the thumbnail of this game on my Steam store, I watched the Realms Deep trailer, I like memes. This game has to be the ultimate meme game, right? Right? Let's find out. One of the first things you see when you load up this game is this screen. Not much different than the game's Steam thumbnail. I remember seeing this game on Steam and thinking that this particular image was just a ploy to get people to check out the Steam page. Clearly a thumbnail that looks like a 5th grader drew it in Microsoft Paint would not really have a reflection on the gameplay, right? It all has to be clickbait to get streamers and dumb YouTubers like me to try out a meme game. Little did I know that this image is actually a perfect summary of the game and what to expect. Not only do you fight against helicopter tampons laden with nails, piss bubbles with emoji faces, and angry poo rats, you actually do wield a 7 barrel shotgun. More importantly, 77P Egg, yes that's the character's name, is indeed an actual stick figure furry with high aspirations of veganism. And due to a tragic mining themed sex accident, his wife has tragically passed. Hey honey, mind my protest with your dickass. Oh Carly! Here comes my furry chest gun and airplane into the coal mine hangar open wide! So you've got all that? You better buckle up, cause this is the ride we're on. After waking up in his apartment, acknowledging his dead wife for one sentence of dialogue, 77P Egg decides it's time to go out and find a new egg wife. Taking control of 77P Egg, we interact with the various items in our apartment. Anyways, once we smash a key into the door panel to unlock it and jackhammer our way to the lower floor, we end up on the streets of Sheffy. Our first destination being the local Pisco to buy a new wife, of course. And it is here that the game truly begins. 77P Egg must battle his way through the Pisco supermarket against shit-talking portal-inspired turrets, walk through the employee womb, and end up doing battle against the Pisco boss who totally does not want you to urinate in his mouth. Now let's reflect for just a second. It's not every day that I get to type up a script discussing such dignified topics like punk rock testicles that spew semen bullets and the best way to shoot them out of the sky is with a sniper rifle that shoots tampons. It's not every day that I get to deliver said script in a quasi-serious tone showing curious gamers why they should or should not try out this game. Like what am I doing with my life? I feel like when 77P Egg Studios, aka Hyper Strange, set out to make this game, they sought to challenge themselves with the task of, can a game be developed in such a way that it looks like it was created in a few hours by high teenagers embracing the general tone of good enough? The answer to that question is actually yes, but also no. On the one hand, the game looks like Timmy's first Blender project, but on the other hand, you can tell that the developers actually know what the hell they're doing because 
and I can't believe I'm saying this, this game is actually quite fun. Despite the layers of purposeful jank, there's actually real game design at play here, and that is what we'll be discussing today. I will tell you right now though, if you don't appreciate grade school level potty humor, no amount of great gameplay will allow you to find this game fun. To enjoy this game, you will need to either have an iron stomach or a tolerance for humor that makes its inspirations Postal 2, Duke Nukem, and Goat Simulator tame by comparison. So you better buckle the fuck up. <laughs> 77p egg egg wife boasts 10 story levels an endless horde mode an arcade mode with cards that buff and debuff and a game mode that randomizes much of the game's content such as the rotation of level geometry weapon functionality movement and more making it potentially much easier to complete a level or perhaps impossible the levels while not exactly deep in their design focus more on creating a sort of surreal style of exploration and while the levels are basically linear as crazy as this comparison is going to sound some of the levels made me feel like I was playing a game that mimicked Half-Life 2 rather than other classic boomer shooters. While most levels were straightforward and challenge based, some areas did indulge in obtuse design, as well as some lengthy vehicle segments. I don't know why driving this boat down a sewer pipe made me think of driving the airboat in Half-Life 2, but it did. While the vehicle segments are fun and a breath of fresh air, the developers flex their design muscles during a boss fight with a nightmare cow gun. Instead of damaging the boss, players must blow up pipes above its head to damage it. Players do this by unlocking crates with keys, spinning a wheel while being pummeled, and doing something we're always taught to avoid in gaming purposely jump into the acid water. And while smoking a bong to boost health, pissing in lava to avoid burning to death while the Kalgon spews meat puns at us on the surface is comical, the fight itself is a challenge and takes time to figure out the nuances of how to beat it. Thus showing us that despite looking like my seven year old's fridge drawing, this game has some actual depth to it. And therefore calling Eggwife a janky shitpost game is pretty unfair as there's much more going on once you think critically about the game's systems. With an inventory, collectibles, wandering NPCs, and interactive items, you could make the argument that there are immersive sim elements in this game. There are also moments of open world exploration, platforming, puzzles, And dare I say the game is actually story driven. Fans have been grieving in their millions and encouraging 77p egg to man the fuck up and get a new wife. That said, the boomer shooter still shines through with strafe jumping, circle strafing, an arsenal of insane weaponry, and classic key hunting. Yet with jank purposely built into the game as well, there are plenty of moments where the player will think, why did you do it like this? Like when the world was upside down and the controls were backwards, it kind of made me do this. Yet moments like this become par for the course and you learn to take it in stride. There's a lot happening at pretty much all times. Even during the quiet exploration segments, there's always something new to read, see, or laugh at. It's definitely a game to take slowly as there will always be something wacky going down at any time, not including all the various drug trips the 77p egg has. Absurdism goes to some pretty interesting heights as there are enemies who are piss and milk bubbles with angry emoji faces, cow cultists, helicopter nail tampons, poo tanks, giant flies, and this vomit spewing sun thing? Just like any great boom shoot game, there are no small encounters, and once you try to get away from Pisco, prepare for anarchy to break out seemingly at any moment. And to combat the assault of anarchy, the weapon arsenal is equally insane. Your melee weapon is a guitar. Not so bad, but how about the pistol that is actually a piss toll that you have to fill with pee to reload? Or the crossbow that fires lube dill? Can I say this word without a community guideline strike? Eggplants? Yeah, okay. The crossbow fires lubed eggplants. 
that bounce around doing damage to enemies. The minigun is a pair of udders firing milk. The BFG is powered by cow souls, and of course, every boomer shooter needs a double barrel. But why stop at two barrels when you can have seven? It also shoots poo and reloads from your butthole stockpile. Yep, there's that. There's also a nail gun, but if you think that's boring, you can try wield it and it shoots explosive nails as a secondary fire. Surprisingly enough, some of these secondary fire modes actually work better in certain situations, bringing a little, dare I say, strategy to the game as well. And a hilarious little side note, to get the models to actually work in first person view, they just kind of added this large black stick to the gun to appear like a stick figure hand. In reality, I don't think the stick figure is actually animated at all. There are also power-ups like bongs and boomer juice. Your double jump is powered by pooping, and if you run out of poo, you just fart. So be sure to eat and give yourself fecal transplants at a consistent rate. Like the game, the soundtrack is also all over the place with metal, ambient, reggae, and western to name a few. And while I don't think this game was ever intended to leave an impression graphically, it does have some nice uh, wetness effects. Really pushing the boundaries of their namesake, Hyper Strange has done something with this game that few indie developers have dared to. It's wild and insulting. And it's gonna make all the over-the-top jokes. You know, kind of like that one guy in your friend group. And I think you'd rather have your mom walk in on you watching porn than this. Oh, sweetheart, you're so gentle. Your hands are so soft. What? What the fuck? Yet, despite the over-the-top crudeness, the game and the last few levels in particular are absolutely amazing spectacles with a surprisingly consistent feeling of surprise at just how far the absurdity will go. So with all of that said, if you can stomach the humor, I think you should play this game. Eggwife actually has a lot to offer here. Large levels with a variety of gameplay, fun and unique weapons, fast movement, a plot and story that only ramps up the consequences as it goes on with a huge cliffhanger that points to part two in the works. I feel like I've done my best to paint this piss casso, you see what I did there? But the truth is, is 77P is hard to talk about because it's a game that has to be experienced to fully be understood. The game is fast, the gunplay is smooth, but as for the rest of it, it defies description. And talking about it doesn't really do it justice because what you have to say about it will make you sound disturbed. Whew, okay, I did it. I got through this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Please don't unsubscribe to the channel because I reviewed this game. <laughs> Actually, if you do the opposite, I'd really appreciate that. I don't know, what do you guys think? Is Eggwife worthy of some praise? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that like button. I'm Salty Octopus, and I will hopefully see you next time. Happy fragging.